Okay, when we last left off, we had created our basic table. And again, uh, I'm still here on the run screen. I need to go back to the design view to go and make any changes in terms of how the numbers look or the uh, width of the columns or things like that. So I'm going to click on design. And I'm back here to my report canvas. And so we've not talked yet about the properties pane, but the properties pane is incredibly valuable in terms of allowing you to make a number of tweaks and changes to your overall uh, report look and feel. Uh, for example, right now I'm on the report properties, and this is the general properties for your entire report. And one of the interesting things you'll see here uh, under page is interactive size, margins, and page size. So what does that mean? So when you hear the term paginated report, people often think of, hey, I need to go print this or want to view it in the context as a document. And so often one of the challenges I hear folks run into is, oh, my report looks fine on the screen, but when I go to print it, it doesn't actually fit on the page. So this is where the items here can be incredibly important. One of the things you have to remember is, hey, what are my margins on each side? So you see here you have a ruler in terms of where the data potentially would sit, uh, but you have to factor in that you're going to have margins on either side of it. So you would have to be careful that you don't run out of space or potentially go over and then things spill onto another page. So here I'm, you know, by default, I'm at 8.5 by 11 with one inch margins around each side. So what does that mean in the context if I'm going to go print this? Well, I'm going to hit run again. And one of the neat things you can do in Power BI Report Builder is actually go and see what this will look like in printed output uh, just by clicking on the print layout button. So if I click on the print layout button, so that's what my report will look like if I were to go print it out right now. Again, page one of one, it's very clean, but again, this is it. This is exactly what I would get if I went and I say printed this to a PDF or exported it out to a document. Uh, so it makes it very straightforward to see exactly what it'll look like if you try to go print the item. And it's something you should use quite a bit if you're, that's what you're trying to go for uh, as your final output for your end users, something that'll be printed out. Now, because it's in this format, as 8.5 by 11, this is, the, this is exactly what you'll get if you try to go do that from, say, export. Uh, so you, if you wanted to change it to, say, be... Uh, 11 by 8.5, you'd have to make sure in the design view, and again, you don't have to toggle this back, but I like to do so, uh, you have to go make sure you change in the design view that by default you want the page size to be different for this item. And you can do it here, you can see very specifically, okay, what's the width and what's the height. And if you want to adjust your margins, you can do so as well. And the interactive size you see down here, you get a little bit of a description. Oops. Oh, bye that a little bit bigger just so I can see it. So it specifies the default size of pages when rendering the report in an interactive renderer. An interactive renderer means exactly what it says. You want to interact with it on the screen. So you'll often hear some folks in the product team talk about soft page breaks versus hard page breaks. A soft page break is something, again, if you're viewing it in the context of a browser and you're clicking the arrows to kind of switch between pages, uh, we consider those a soft page break. And that's really what uh, uh, SSRS or reporting services was designed for and optimized for. It was not optimized initially for the print experience. But if you're looking at hard page breaks, uh, that's something where, again, you're trying to figure out what your page break would be just like you would if you were, say, looking at a Word document. So just something to keep in mind here. It's not an issue with my particular report, but as we get more sophisticated, you'll see that becomes important uh, to make sure that your, every, all your content can fit on the page, a hard page break properly. So with this item, one of the things that I had called out was, oh, my numbers look wrong, or it doesn't even show as a dollar sign. So here, if I select a particular uh, text box, you'll see it calls out the name of it. Then I have some different things that I can change here in my properties to make that look better. Uh, I'm actually going to right-click on it and choose the text box properties selection. So now I get a number of items here where I can do some cool stuff uh, in terms of visibility, different actions, things like that. But all I want to do right now is change the number. So if you've used Excel or other programs, this should look very familiar in terms of uh, the formatting. So I want to choose currency and I want to use two uh, decimal places. And again, I can choose different symbols if I wanted, how I want to show negative numbers, I want to show the values as thousands. I don't need to do any of that. All I want to do is make it look just like the sample. So I'm going to click OK, and that'll only adjust for that particular box. If I go to this one and right-click and choose the text box properties, 
You see it's also only called text box 30, which I could rename if I want, but if I choose the number, I could have this be totally different. So I'm going to say I want this to be currency, but as opposed to English, I want this to show up uh, here in uh, Russian. All right. So I'm going to choose the Russian symbol for this particular line for the total. I'm going to click OK. And then for this item, for the text box properties, I'm not going to have it as currency. I'm actually going to just have it as a number, and I want it with four decimal points. All right. So now if I run my report, you'll see that oh, I have, for each individual city, that text box does in fact reflect the American dollar symbol and two decimal places. For the total, however, it is showing the Russian symbol, uh, which is why I got a little thrown initially, because <laughs> I'd forgotten I had these collapsed by default. And when I expand it, though, you see that I am able to have that level of control over each of the different boxes. Now, this can be very, very powerful if you need to uh, format something differently, or if you need to make different colors, or you have a lot of individual control here that you just don't have, at least right now, with some of the tables in uh, Power BI Desktop. So it's something to keep in mind as you're trying to work through some certain scenarios. If a paginating report might make sense, you do have enormous flexibility to customize every single piece, not only of the overall report, but of each individual cell potentially in your actual report uh, tables. So if I collapse this back up, you also see this number is reflective of what I chose on the previous screen. So again, very easy way to kind of go and make those changes to these individual items here. But I don't want it to stay this way, so I'm just going to switch back to the design campus, uh, design canvas, excuse me. And you'll see here, I've already made the change there. I'm going to right click, text box properties, number, currency. And again, I don't want this to stay as Russian. I want it to stay as the US. OK, and same thing for this one. Now, I could multi-select and select all of these, but I was trying to show uh, how you can get more granular control of your items uh, here. And so now if I click Run, you see it's nicely formatted just as I like. OK, so that's how you can make some simple tweaks to your table here uh, in terms of some of the properties. Uh, just very quickly changing the numbers. If I wanted to go and say expand the column width, very easy to do that. I can expand it this way, expand city out, expand the sales out, and rerun it. And so again, I've got the very specific uh, items that I can go and expand, and you see what that looks like now. Let's say for whatever reason I don't want these right justified for each of the different columns. I go back to my design. I can select here. You see right now that's right justified. I can either select each individual item or I could select the entire row. So I'll just do these one at a time. Change it over. Make it left justified. And rerun it. Now, I think something else you're noticing here is hmm, this could potentially take longer to go and create a report than it would with Power BI Desktop once I get to all the different things I can tweak. Sure, that absolutely is true. It, on average, you will probably spend a little bit longer here uh, creating a report with uh, Power BI Report Builder than, say, with Desktop. But at the same time, for a lot of folks, they need that level of control and the amount of time they take. It's not like they're going in and consistently tweaking this or slicing and dicing. This is a very specific report created for you know, a very specific template or use case. And in general, once the initial creation process is done, there's really not a lot you need to go and uh, update along the way. So that's how I can kind of tweak my initial table here. I still haven't done anything special. Uh, I just used a wizard made some very minor updates, and again, very straightforward, and if you've used tools like Word or Excel or others, it should seem, at least so far, very familiar to you how you would go and say, change some of the numbers or change the justification of the text. So that's a kind of more advanced 
uh, table bits. And again, this is just getting started, but a way to quickly tweak your table. And next, we're going to go and add a chart uh, as part of this series. So thanks very much.